Uh, my name is Jeff Lichtman. I work in the Department of Molecular and Cellular Biology and also in the Center for Brain Science at Harvard University. And uh, I run a laboratory that does connectomics. Of all the parts of the body um, that humans have studied, there is none more complicated or mysterious than the brain. And neuroscience is the field that tries to understand this very complicated organ. I think uh, as biologists move into different terrains, uh, diseases of the nervous system still remain embarrassingly poorly understood compared to the diseases of all the other organ systems. And the physical and functional architecture of the brain is understood much less than any other organ. So it's easy to be a neuroscientist if, if you want to be in an area that needs help. And there are techniques where you use lots of people, thousands of people, to work on data like this. iWire is an example. Still, you would require millions, maybe hundreds of millions of people uh, to make progress on a big brain. The brain, like all other organs, is made up of nerve cells. Uh, other organs, it's kidney cells or liver cells. Uh, the difference between the brain and these other organs is that the numbers of types of nerve cells far exceed the numbers of types of cells in the rest of the body combined. And what compounds the problem with the diversity of cell types in the brain is the fact that these cells are interconnected in a vast and very complicated wiring diagram because the cells rather than being little circles or cubes or uh, rectangles are actually look more like spiders with very very long wires that connect them to cells elsewhere and to understand the function of the brain you really have to understand how they're connected there have been very few technologies that allow you to see the full glory or nightmare of all these wires and the kinds of technologies we're developing are designed to allow us to see the entire wiring diagram of the brain. And to do that, we have to see what is in every little part of a piece of brain volume. And that requires us to cut brains very thin. And by thin, I mean about a thousandth as thin as a human hair. And then each thin section, we image everything in that section with a special kind of electron microscope that has extraordinarily high resolution. Um, and then we do that for section after section after section of the brain. And you can think of those pictures as if they're frames of a movie. And if you play them one after another, you're not moving through time, but you're moving through space. So it's basically a movie that allows you to follow individual wires as they pass from one section to another. And you have to go through 30,000, maybe even 100,000 sections to get from one end of a cell to the other end of a cell. But by doing that, you can see every single wire, every single uh, direction, and every single connection each wire makes with the wires of other cells. And these connections are called synapses and this technique has enough resolution to see all the synapses. Uh, the brain is profoundly mysterious, largely because we don't have a lot of information about how the nerve cells are interconnected. And the hope is that by generating this kind of data, we will have a information treasure trove, a, a huge big data set upon which to study the brain now in much greater detail. It's basically trying to take a physical brain and turn it into a digital object that is capable of being mined for information and studied. Whereas in a, in an, a person, the brain is inaccessible. Now the brain is accessible because it's in silico, if you will. It's inside a computer.